Aloha! Aloha! Claim it as your heritage. Searchable as reptiles. You can't claim. What are you saying? If you live, if you have, like, if you're just like Europe, you know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, like everyone's like, well, are you Irish or English? You're like, I'm not kind of the same thing. As what? You have to go back to the first part you said. I, I something about like if you're from Africa and you have. Are we dark starting skin. the podcast now? No, no, I'm just asking because uh, I, I missed what you said. Well, I'm saying I'm, I'm appreciating all the African art yeah. in here. So, like, if you look at that one over there, for example, it's like a woman wearing traditional clothing and she's carrying the vase Potter, on Potter her head. head. Yeah. Right. So it's just kind of like. If you have that color skin, you can kind of claim all of Africa as, as you know, your heritage, okay. right? But the truth is, the continent of Africa is massive and diverse. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Compared to, like, say, Europe, right? right. Europe is, especially Western Europe, it's quite okay. small. Yeah, it's much smaller. Not very diverse. It's, it's I mean... There's no, no... It doesn't cover nearly as much of the north and south of... You're talking yeah, about, like... Yeah, I mean, like, culturally, food, you know, all that kind of stuff, whatever. I suppose. I feel like a lot of those European countries have, like, their own little cultures I and think stuff you're either, thing. like, the Vikings or the people the Vikings attacked, and that's it. <laughs> There's your diversity. Those are your people groups. You know what I mean? I suppose. So I mean, there's little it. idiosyncrasies, sure. But yeah. but my point is, like, if I said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm from European descent, everyone's like, that's not an acceptable answer. Which one are you? Mm. And I'd be like, I don't know, man. This versus is like, like my great, great, great grandparents. How versus do I know? if you're like Nigerian versus like Cameroonian. Yeah, or, or even like you could live in South Africa and be from three completely different people groups. You know what I mean? Like tall, nomadic warrior people or short, you know what I mean? Cultivating farmer okay. people, you know. Well, but in Europe, it's just like... As I look at that picture that you're talking about in the first place, I mean, yes, I understand it is supposed to be... It does have African vibes <clears throat> for sure, just like a lot of the other art. The skin is like nobody has that skin color. Well, that's not actually skin. <laughs> that's like a silhouette, right? Yeah, so. it's a silhouette. That's what I was going to say, a silhouette. Right. And you know what? She actually looks French. Mm. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> Artistic license has been taken. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I think like I'm like quite white or whatever. But quite white. I think, quite, I think quite white. White. Quite, quite, quite white. white. That's quite white. You, you stay <laughs> white here. I'll be white black. Well, I have like a, I'm like the medium white. I'm more like red white, like T positive white, you know, but I have a T negative sister, <laughs> right? Brittany, you met her. The one that likes ice cream, the blonde hair, blue eyes, I, like blonde, blonde hair. I think white and black are just a construction of society. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, my point was like my other sister is like almost your skin tone and dark hair. Well, naturally her hair changes all the time, but almost your skin tone, almost your hair color. She still has blue eyes, but she's very dark. So we, I have like pretty mixed origin and I'm actually very happy with how much even more mixed racially my family is now because we have... Almost every race represented. We, we we need a little more Asia in the Hartles. Like there's a, there's a little bit, but I we have a lot that. of. There we well, go. If Riley th still thinks that Eli's little pee pee super cute, then yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> It'll be full circle. But anyway, I like the diversity. I think it's fun. You know what I mean? I always was like shocked when people were like, "No, separate everything." I'm mm. like, "No, blend it." <laughs> but but it's, I might be biased, so like super blended and not much connection. Like we know people that are in our family because they were like famous and everyone talked about it. So like on my dad's side, Daniel Boone was a relative. On my mom's side, uh, Colonel Laughlin McQuarrie, the founder of Sydney, was a, one of my ancestors somehow. But like, I don't know, you know, like we have a bunch of ethnicities if you want to call that but they're just really countries in europe you know mm. they're not like super different ethnicities i got you I got and we're all mixed up and we all pop out differently you know like i got some european that's like half of my heritage is all european ancestry and then the pacific islander side of things well, you drink too much water that's why european 
<laughs> That's, but I was American when I went in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 so, the, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's a, uh, it's fun. It's fun to mix it up a bit, and it's fun to poke around with all that stuff. I think it's fun mixing stuff up, and the thing that plows through like. Uh, as mixed up as it is and mixed up as the family is like the the old nose plows on through all the genetics the nose yeah this nose oh yeah it's pl- plowed through from like you know generations back i look what, at old pictures what is your nose my nose it's pretty filipino i was gonna say nala from the lion king <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's, that's not bad <laughs> but, but the, everybody gets it is what i'm saying like it's, uh, it's yeah. plowed through it whatever genetics have been thrown out it to date it seems to plow right through if you look at my nose, none of my kids' nose looks anything like it. Mm. Not at all. But that's because I broke it so many times and they kept putting it back together. What is this so about you like Pittsburghians a- just breaking your noses all the time? My grandpa broke his nose so many times. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we stand too close to the batter. <laughs> <laughs> at least that was my problem. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think it was my grandpa was, you know, was when they were still wearing leather helmets for football. So mm, <laughs> There you go. It was probably still the Steelers' own. It was still owned by the Rooney family. <laughs> so, it's all good. I'm, I'm sure he had Heinz ketchup. So. so we haven't done this podcast for almost nine months. So those of you guys listening, welcome back. Um Searchable as reptiles. Searchable My name is Garrett reptiles. Hartle. This is Brian Cusco. I kind of forget how to do this, but that was kind of fun. Also known as the Diving Deep in the Shallow End podcast. And we were invited to do it again by the lovely lady Eden. Mm-hmm. Who Thanks, Eden. Is apparently, a super fan of the podcast. It's her favorite podcast on the planet. She said she drove here from, I believe she said Oregon. Yes, she did. Right? Yep. And she listened to our podcast the whole way here the podcast that we just stopped doing a year ago. (laughs) And so, yeah, it's been a long time since someone came up and was like, I love, you know, I got a a couple podcast things this weekend, actually. One was the searchable as reptiles. And then the other one was from the ground up. Did you ever listen to that podcast or go on it or anything? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they've done anything in a long time Mm. either, but I had a really good time being on their podcast. That, That was, that was Joe, right? Yeah, it was the one that, uh, yeah. And Joe Fillon? Yes. Yeah. And his girlfriend. I forget. Starts with an M, maybe? Or an A? Oh, M or an A? Jessica? If, no. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, you can comment in the section. Or you could dig up our old Facebook group for, you know, you know what would be funny is if Matt has been like adminning it the whole time and it's a vibrant community now. No. No, I knew it didn't happen. I just, that's why it would be funny if it did. Yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, help me out. Was it Melissa? I want to say Melissa. I think it was Melissa. Yeah. I said okay. M, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, just popped, And then I so. said Jessica. So it's close. So it's like, <laughs> Melissa is like Jessica <laughs> with an Jessica. <laughs> Majessica. Majessica. She was a rather majestic, ma- majestic person i liked melissa yeah it was good i, I don't yeah. know if she was there when i went on i think she was like busy doing something else at the time that i came on yeah i don't know that they're together anymore hmm. i think they are not okay, i have no but idea I, I enjoyed being on that podcast because they they specifically were like hey so we don't want to talk about reptiles at all and I think they said something to the effect, I'm just going to paraphrase here, something to the effect of like, this podcast will be searchable as reptiles, but it's not going to be about reptiles. They said that? No, I was very much <laughs> paraphrasing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get it, I get it. You want to dive deep in the shallow end? Should we just get right into it? Right off the bat? No, let's, let's pour some whiskey first. Bro. We haven't. We do have... Who sponsored this one? So, well, I'm going to go ahead and say that James Green sponsored this one, even though the whiskey that I'm pulling out is from not underneath from this him. seat is not from him. But it's because you have five bottles to go home with from James Green. You're right. Yeah, so he so did have... I. He gave <laughs> me enough whiskey to where we could have used his whiskey. But I, I happen to bring some from home. What I've got here is four hermetically sealed bags with... Ooh. Eight, also hermetically sealed. I love sealed. hermetics. <laughs> also, <laughs> and hermeneutics. Also, um, eight hermetically sealed uh, sample jars. I'm going to let you choose which one we open. The fun thing about these is I don't know what they are, and we won't know what they are until after we look up the key codes in my phone for I'm what it is. I'm going to use my Eagle Rare sensor. 
<laughs> to try to just drink more Eagle Rare all the time. <laughs> One of them could be Eagle Rare. Which, I don't know. Which, by the know. way, I found out I liked because of this podcast. So You know, the other cool thing about this particular episode of the podcast, aside from the fact that it's a nice reunion... Um, let the record state that he picked the Whoa. second one from my side of the table, <laughs> which was the second one from the left as the camera's looking at us. Which doesn't matter at all because you just because you're watching the podcast. Up there. Yeah, because we, you guys are not watching a podcast. We happen to be oh, filming it for YouTube. It. Some people listen some people in their car while they're driving. Yeah, some people are just listening in the car. I think our sense. most, uh, the most avid Searchables Reptiles fans actually listen in the car when they're driving. That's so they, the only time I listen to podcasts, and they're great for that. Runs, maybe, but definitely not yeah. watching them. Yeah. Um, it seems weird to me to sit down and, and watch, watch that podcast. much of a podcast yeah. on YouTube. It's like you, you probably should find some work. It, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I, I think just because I multitask too much. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. She should be working. Yeah, I got you. All right. They're, one's a, a hair darker than the other. They're looking decently this dark. One's a little bit light, but yeah. they're pretty close. They're pretty close. We'll go. We'll start light. <clears throat> How about that? I like it. And we'll figure out what that is, what they are later. We'll figure out, by the end of the podcast, we'll reveal what it is we were drinking, and we'll... We'll go with that and see how we like it. But not that it's a whiskey podcast, but we have always had whiskey on the podcast. No, this has always been a thing. It has always so been a thing. So one of the things... Oh, sorry, sorry. Before I lose it, um, the other cool thing about the fact that we're re- re-upping this and revamping it is that the very idea of this podcast was born in a place just like this, i.e. That's actually a- what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Airbnb. After the Tinley Park. Literally sitting in the little basement by ourselves, trying to have a deeper conversation with a, there's like 25, 30 people in the other room. Yeah, you might hear. Multinational crowd. Yeah, so if you hear a little bit of background chatter, that's that's, uh, everybody hanging out at my Airbnb, as is tradition after a. A nice Tinley show. And maybe we'll call them all in here to make a bunch of hoopla. Before, yeah, you're good. Before we got we people trying to podcast. be quiet. It's not that kind of podcast. You're good, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's pretty fun. We got a, we got a good Cheers. crew of people. Thank you. Um, it was a great Tinley and ARBC, I thought. I agree. I've never um, had a bad one. So I, well, yeah, I guess it depends on the metrics you're using. I was not talking about, like, finances or sales. That's what everyone asks about after the mm. show. How was your show? How was your show? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I just thought it was really good. I love the diversity of animals and people. I can tell. You know how we always, like, fall on a subject? I think diversity might be the one of this podcast. Mm. It seems like it keeps coming up. But, um, yeah, a lot of new reptiles, a lot of new people. You know, the industry has changed a lot in the past few years and even just since the last time we podcast oh true months ago true a lot has changed yeah so pretty crazy but well a lot has changed for you in the reptile industry too just like oh me 100 percent. well you too i mean you got another kid added to the thing yeah that's more life stuff though like i feel like your specific business has gone through a lot of morphine in the last oh yeah yeah. well like 60 days (laughs) (laughs) we could do our monthly podcast and i'd have a lot that changed yeah but yeah we'll get into that in a minute but um yeah, it was so good. I mean, it was cool. having a wedding at the auction was fantastic. Yeah, I've seen multiple people. Congratulations, Chris and Adeline. Yeah, I've, I've seen multiple people. Yeah, if you guys didn't see or watch or hear about it, yeah, Adeline Robinson, who does some wonderful art, uh, yeah. f- always donating and bringing in tons of uh, revenue for US Arc, and just, as well as being just a lovely, beautiful She's person. She's just wonderful to everyone yeah. and always has been. Always has been. Yeah. Just so sweet and kind and Chris lovely. is a lucky dude, for yes, sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I've seen several proposals at uh, US Arc auctions at this point. <laughs> I and thought you were going to say several proposals in her direction. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me either. Nah, but, yeah, just, but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, but that was the first wedding, and it was actually like wedding. Like they made an aisle for her. She walked up to Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. <laughs> there was another song I didn't recognize, and then it morphed into Jurassic. I think Park, that's just. It was some kind of like. That was the beginning of the track. It was all the Jurassic Park. It wasn't like oh. yeah, I hear you saying it wasn't the official Jurassic Park theme song. Yeah. But it was. They took the Jurassic Park theme song, and turned it into some kind of like other track that was. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that was what a, what a nut. You know, that's fun though. You got to do, you got to do some, you got to do life differently sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? And it made sense. I mean, they, was like, they were smart, I think, because for a number of reasons, I mean, they definitely saved on wedding costs. You know how much a wedding can cost if you want to like throw they a big party. They probably 
raised the amount of money for them that a traditional wedding would cost. Right. Totally. I don't know what the final numbers were. I don't know either, but people were throwing out some People some were throwing bucks. down. We, we threw down a little bit. Of, yeah. Well, we, we dropped some cash in the hat for them, so... Yeah, I thought people were getting sick of hearing our name. We heard that a couple of times <laughs> yeah. just this morning. All I heard was reach out, reach out, reach out, bidding <laughs> on stuff. The funny thing is Jesse was right there bidding, but Potter was just blind enough for whatever reason. To get... No, I think he was like behind someone because Potter couldn't see him the entire time. He stood up and he's like, oh, it's Jesse Johnson. No, even reading. after he stood up, he still couldn't tell. He oh, really? He never, he never called. Well, he thought maybe little... it was for Potter's me. getting a little up there. <laughs> he's a little, a little glaucoma going maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding, Brian. We love you. Yeah, no, that was that was funny because at first because he could like see, he raised his hand, but I think like yeah, he was behind somebody a little bit. He could like see my face, but Jesse's hand. He was like, "Is that Cusco?" Yeah. And then, he, then Jesse, I was like, "Nope, that's not me. Don't you be calling me for that bit. I, I'm not accidentally bidding on stuff." Oh, did you try it? I like it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, but good good show. Good show. Um. Different for me traveling there with the whole Freedom Breeder crew this time. I've never traveled to the show with a crew, with the exception of flying to well, Pittsburgh been, first. Like, been with them, but yeah, not jumped on a plane and head out with them. It's so much better that way. I used to basically force Kimberly Paws to fly to Pittsburgh to drive out with me, and she's like, I'm not doing that anymore. And I'm like, I'm lonely in the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long drive. Wait, are you not rolling out with the crew? J- Bigler came to you, didn't he? Mm. Yes, yeah. so Morph Mixology, Jason Bigler, with his super cool guitar that he donated, uh, flew out to Pittsburgh this time. We, we actually were trying to salvage plans that you and he made slightly before that, where you guys were going to pop in on Bar Check right. and say, hey. Um, and I guess that fell apart. I didn't know that part of the story. Um, it was just, I was, it was never 100%. It was always an idea, because we did that before, mm. where I, I actually shifted... Um, I think I actually changed my flight. I already had stuff booked. And he was like, hey, I'd like to go see Brian. I was like, oh, maybe I'll just change my flight to fly into Michigan right. and out of Chicago, which is what I did. And so he drove up and met me up there. Yeah. Um, and then, we, yeah, that was... But that didn't work out this time. So then he... I, I, don't know. I was potentially going to fly out and, and surprise you. Um, show up. Yeah. Just, that would have been hilarious. It, it would have been I awesome. I wish you were a fun person like that. I am. Yeah. I just don't... I don't... It wasn't... Let's just say it this way. Time. You were. <laughs> I'm going to be that fun again. We'll find out. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I, I grabbed Bigler. He got to come by. What was cool is the last time he was in Pittsburgh, I was still in the basement as far as, like, the business and all that stuff. So big changes since he's been around because yeah. we've been in that shop. I don't know if you know this. Tinley is the anniversary, Tinley October, of me getting the new building two years ago. No, I do remember that. Because I literally had to come a day late to Tinley two years ago because I was still signing papers. Yeah. So everyone drove out, and then I flew uh, out one way and then drove back with everybody. So, yeah, two-year anniversary of being at the, the new shop. Um, so it was cool. It's good. Is it good? Yeah. What do you think about the whiskey? I uh, wasn't a big fan on the first sip, not going to lie. Really? Nope. Um, I was like, ooh, it's good. I also did, like, the amount of somersaults and backflips my taste buds have been doing this evening are many. And all over the place? Yeah, I went to the, that tapas place and had all kinds of different, like, oh, dude, I mean, there was it's a, bone marrow that I scraped onto a piece of sourdough toast that had been, you know, heavily buttered and then topped it off with some... Uh, Onions, some caramelized onions, a little bit of salt, and squeeze some lemon. I had some oysters with, like, Tabasco and some other type of thing. And yeah, you're going to make everybody throw up. <laughs> there, there, there was, uh, there they was, all like, just threw up in their car. <laughs> mac and cheese with, like, what? bacon bits in it. Where there, are we going Like, real this? bacon bits in it. Like, uh, And uh, there, was, uh, there was some steak. I had some halibut and risotto that Julie had on her plate. That, that was super weird. It was... All awesome. I don't know what this weird thing. There's the lobster. No, rolls. I just mean like what the. There's no connection between any of those kinds of. Foods. No, that's what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. The somersaults and backflips. It's yeah, like you're going yeah. from that to to you. a like basically they call it a lobster roll. It's like a Texas toast split in half and stuffed with lobster. Mm, that that was, would kill me. Yeah, that, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent though for me, not being allergic to shellfish, and then. For dessert, I they had I took two of the desserts and combined them into one. 
that they have on the menu. They, they have this like cookie that they bring out on one of those type of skillets that they like bring you fajita stuff, but a little mini one. So like yeah. cook it in a hot pan, it comes out all right. hot. Like a, with a, like BJ's Pazuki right. or whatever, yeah. With a scoop of ice cream on it, and then they also have a thing that's a scoop of ice cream that they have a shot of espresso to pour on it so i poured uh, the shot of espresso over the cookie and ice cream perfect. with their little cream milk thing that's how i finished it so it was funny he uh called me and we're breaking down the show it's kind of loud and everything he's like yeah you should come to dinner with us it's this tapas place and i i thought you said topless place <laughs> and i was like that does sound like something freedom reader would would want to go do <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know if that's something I would want to go do. I, I kind of prefer people to wear, like, hairnets. So, like, if they're not even wearing shirts, that's weird. And then I was like, and do I have to be topless? How does this work? Because I don't really want to be... I, I'm like, have you ever seen those uh, proboscis monkeys with the big stomachs that digest all the leaves? They got all their stuff in there. Usually when I see a proboscis monkey, I think about the ginormous nose, not so no, much the stomach. But the stomach is epic. You should check it out. They're like leaf eaters. So they have like, you know, goats have like the giant. That's kind of how I'm living these days. It's been a rough 10 months. I was like, I don't know if I want to be topless in a restaurant <laughs> using my digestion gut in front of everyone. That's how I'm living this weekend, dude. I just feel like I've been rolling everywhere. Dude, I, yeah, I feel it. It's, it's been pretty epic. It has been good. But, but the, to that end, the uh, I'm going to need to take a second sip of this because it's after all of that. Let's it, see what you think because right. I liked my second sip too. My, the first one, it seemed a little young. Mm. Yeah, it's got a, a real like alcohol burn to it for sure. But I like the little notes of honey. Yeah, there's a little honey notes, a little, little grainy mm -hmm. to me um, right. off the bat. But again, coming from like having that bazooki ice cream thing with espresso like my taste buds are compromised so i'm no good at i'm no good for that it's like <laughs> it's okay and then also james had and then the cigar and james yeah, had some did. penelope which was you know 110 proof and bourbon junkies pick so like already i'm like coming off of the hot stuff yeah yeah anyway so one thing i'm i'm super excited about i've been saying it over and over again but one of the auction items, I usually do not bid on live animals at the auctions. It's kind of like I have the animals I want. I go get them intentionally. You know, I'm never like, oh, that's a good deal, and I could use one of those, right? However, um, we've been building out kind of our educational program at Reach Out Reptiles and doing a lot more community outreach stuff and everything lately. And... I love doing that stuff, and I've done a lot of that in the past. But when I was younger, I had a collection that was, like, one of everything. Now I have, like, 100 house snakes. Well, that's an under-exaggeration. <laughs> I have more than 100 house snakes. I can bring 100 to one show. <laughs> and so it's like, look at this one. Look at this one. And everyone's like, do you have a lizard? Or, <laughs> you know. So I've been kind of, like, building out the collection. And I got a pair of... Um, rhino iguanas babies that Thai Park produced I was there that's so cool because, they are cool well I don't know if you remember but Thai I do remember. invited Kira when she was five years old to go to the very first iguana fest as his VIP which I thought was super classy and the reason why is because um Kimberly was Kira's friend the whole time and Kimberly rescues iguanas they had an iguana I think it was born this way but its back legs didn't work, so it was paralyzed. And Kimberly posted some social media about it, and Kira had seen it. And then she was thinking, she's like, I think I could invent a cart for that iguana. And so she, we actually designed and rigged up like a little cart with wheels. It was like a jacket you put on with an axle and wheels through it so that her, you know, uh, back leg paralyzed rhino iguana could get around. And so it was pretty cool, and she put it on and did all the social media stuff, and, of course, Ty saw it, and so he thought that was cool, so he invited us. Anyway, we had the time of our lives because he treated her like I would treat her, like a little angel, you know, my princess, and he's, like, telling – he told – he dedicated a staff person to us and was like, take them anywhere, show them anything, whatever they want to do. Well, Kira was like, I want to go in this cage. I want to go in that cage. I want to – so she just literally went in all the enclosures – 
And there was a shot you can still see on one of Dave Kaufman's old episodes where Kira sat down as a five-year-old and ranted about the importance of conservation yeah, of no, iguanas. And like, this is like 40 adults all in tears. And she was doing it all with this big rhino iguana. And she's sitting down and the rhino iguana's like faces at her level. And she's just like chubbing its cheeks and patting it. She's like, like this big guy the whole time. It was so cute. So anyway, uh, I've always liked them. I, there's not a lot of reptiles that I've wanted and haven't had. Right? I was like, y- you know, I've had a lot of reptiles. and I kind of get what I want. So, but cyclers are one of them. So I, I just, I'm kind of dumbfounded that I'm 40 years old and just getting my first cyclera iguanas. Um, and, you know, because of Chris and Adeline's wedding and stuff, I named them Chris and Adeline. I got a pair of them. So, so that'll be fun. So they'll be cool to grow up for the, the education program. Yeah, no program. doubt. It is cool for me too, just to see that happen for all the reasons you stated, as well as um, I mean, the first time I ever saw any baby Cyclera was at Ty's place. Yeah. And just like played with some little babies They're there. So stinky. Super cute. cute and super chill. Yeah. Gosh, they just cruise. Just sit in your hand and just like, what's up? We're hanging. 100%. I love that. You know, you don't have to worry about them like jumping up to like, like, oh, don't jump out of my hand, little guy. Just... No, they're just like supremely confident right out of the gate. Awesome. I love it. Little chubsters. Yeah. It's nice. I'm very excited about that. All right. Okay. Diving deep in the shallow end. Yeah, so, again, shout out to Eden uh, for implementing this or for provoking. Provoking, that's not the right. Provoking. That doesn't have the right connotation. Eden has provoked us. <laughs> we were provoked. We're podcasting into, about her now. <laughs> this is the provoked podcast. <laughs> uh, she had an idea, and I, my poor brain uh, didn't hold on to it for diving deep in the shallow end topic. Um it's okay. I got another one from our crew in the other room. Yeah, the whole crew in the other room had this. And I, it's funny, just like the whole reason behind starting this podcast was like, ooh, we should be recording this conversation because it's super cool and natural. And <laughs> that's what happened as soon as they brought up the idea of uh, diving deep in the shallow end subject for tonight. And then right off the bat, like the conversation just went from, you know, uh, does you know the, so the the topic was obviously does size matter? That's the topic, right? Which right. is of great. Of course, it has to be like matter. perfect for you and your super dwarves, and we're not going to get away from talking about that tonight, apparently. <laughs> but but th- then it turned into like you know uh, Dustin mentioned, oh, it's really about the you know motion of the ocean, or you know how how the torque and like you know how does that work, and then uh, the size and the depth and the and all these things, and it was just funny. Oh, yeah, I think I, I should said, have just recorded that. Should have just recorded that, and it was really good. And the next thing we know, we're talking about whale penises and dorks because those are the same thing. And then Johnny mentions about, did you see the guy that, like, whale rolled over and slapped him with his dork <laughs> and broke like, his, neck, broke his and neck, and he didn't even know what happened? It's just, that's just, like, wow. So anyway, yeah, does size matter? Mm. I guess it depends on how deep you want to get. Well, I like to take this from a uh, marketable reptile perspective. Oh, great. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I do. I think, so this is one thing that I think has been interesting to see in the reptile hobby in, say, the past, I mean, it's been happening for a while, but really in the last, like, two years, I think it's exploded, is, like, smaller pets with like a larger enclosure, right? Because you have a, like a vast array and ability to observe all these natural behaviors. So if you have something like, you know, even a Superdorf retic, it's a fairly large animal. And if you really want to see that thing run around, you would need like a walk-in enclosure. You know sure. what I mean? Like having a couple walk-in enclosures that I have now, it's a totally different level when it comes to interacting with your animal because you're not like waking it up and yanking it out and forcing it to interact. You can go in there and interact with them totally. on their terms. But if you have an isopod or something, then that enclosure can be like a 12-inch cube, you know? And that's the way it goes. So you see the popularity of things like micro geckos. And I mean, that's kind of like where I'm going with the house snakes. I really enjoy them. They're, some of them are so tiny, you know, that you could literally keep them in like a 20-gallon aquarium and it would be two to three times the length of the snake, you know? And so, <clears throat> yeah, I think, but I think too small and it becomes lame. I just got some spiny isopods 
for Hadley. And I'm like, I can't even see these. Mm, like, yeah. they're, they're like a sixteenth of an inch long. You'd have to look at them under at least a magnifying glass, if not a microscope, to see the spines on them. And I was like, okay, they are cool looking, but if they're going to be that small, like, I could just keep viruses in my body bioactively and look at them under a microscope and be like, look how cool my little pets are. Like, this is a certain of virus. goes too far. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> oh. What'd you get? Show me your hand. Which one did you have? You Magnifying glass. Let's put it in your glass so you can have it, too. Um, Share the colony. Yeah. So I guess the answer is... If, as far as that's concerned, the size does matter. And I'll say in the opposite direction, too. One of the coolest standout animals that I saw at Tinley was strictly because of the size. Okay. What was it? This massive western hognose snake. Oh, okay. It was huge. Whose table was that at? Chris Hernan reptiles. Oh, right. And... I mean, it was like I was an albino. out over JMG stuff, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was like red. I mean, and it was wasn't. I mean, it was bright. It was vibrant, yeah. vibrantly, you know, red orange. Some like of the colors are getting out of that stuff. It's crazy. Blotches, yeah. which a lot of sometimes the bigger ones, I guess, they aren't that vibrant. But this thing was vibrant and huge. I mean, it was like I, mean, I, don't, I don't. You didn't see it. I'm, I'm guessing. No. Okay. I, yeah. I've I've got it right here. I'll show you just so you can, like, kind of. Either concur with me or be like, oh, I've seen bigger. I might have. Oh no, I saw a giant sand boa. Holy crap! Look at that thing. It's massive, right? That's a big hognose snake. That's literally like kind of your average ball python breeder male. You know what I mean? Like, wow, that's a big. Hognose. That's big, right? It's almost as big around as your wrist. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I was so geeked out on it. Wow. It was so massive, dude. That is big. That's a big old hognose snake. Do you have that on any of your social media people can go yeah, see? Yeah, I had posted. Well, it was an Instagram story. Oh, okay. So I, I guess oh, yeah. it's gone. I can <laughs> oh. I can take I, I'll repost it to as a as a post on Instagram so people can take a look at it. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Because it's a big hognose. I've never seen one anywhere near that size. It, have like, you? Look well, at first it looked like it was like a forced perspective thing, but then as it kept moving around, you're like, oh, oh, wow, oh, oh, wow. That's, no, that's big. I've never seen one that big. Yeah, okay. I, I haven't even seen like a giant Madagascar hog no snake that big. No, I've seen them longer, but probably but not, not that, that thick. Not that thick, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> the size. Yeah, that was, that was what made it stand out. It was the standout reptile at the show for me simply because of the size. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of funny. I've noticed this before. Whatever an animal is, if I can alter its size, I'm more interested in it. <laughs> so obviously I do that with the super dwarves, right? Like, let's take the biggest snake on the planet and make it as small as we can. And then I was thinking the other day, I was like, what if you could have toke geckos that ran around looking like Mexican beaded lizards or something? You know what yeah, I mean? That was painful. Or I was like, oh, how good would, it, would a rhino iguana be at eight feet? That's what I want. You know what terrifies me is uh, sometimes I'll look at like either a, a pixie frog, like my pixie oh, frog. You or, know, I was going to say the same, like toads. Yeah. Like I don't want them to be too big. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine a frog the size of a, of a Volkswagen or Dude, something? Uh, yeah, and I can imagine being gone in an instant. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it would be like such a... a there's something so horrible about, about being the way digested they eat. with your eyes. Yeah, like they're getting pushed down into the it's stomach by the eyes. Basically, <laughs> like that movie, The Blob, or something like that. Like I just got swallowed by a water balloon full of stomach acid. <laughs> and it uses its eyes to shove me into its stomach. <laughs> yes, they they are terrifying. I would rather be torn to pieces by monitor lizards or something than swallowed by a giant pixie frog. <laughs> would you? Yeah, I think because I, I think about it. You know, I look at it and I'm like. Gosh, that just is terrible. That's horrible. Yeah, it's a horrible <laughs> slow death. Like, let me just park you in my stomach until later. Maybe you'll die, maybe not. But you'll have a lot of time to think about what you've done. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so I we guess... We should record this conversation. <laughs> I guess size, size does um, play a huge factor in just about anything you could think about, really. I mean, let's. how about... Is there... A, a situation where size doesn't matter. Can you think of one of those other than the 
horrible cliche obvious topic that that question is usually geared towards i don't know what you or our listeners are thinking about right now size doesn't matter a little tougher question eh you know i think in in like personality or connection so again like i'm thinking of like an animal you know, an animal. Like I was thinking person when you said personality, but what are you thinking? Personality too, or or, an, or humans too. We just don't have as much diversity of size. But like, no, things oh, for that are things that are about the size as us, we connect with, right? So like a dog, and a dog's running around. You got golden retriever or whatever, and you're like, oh, look at it. It's like it's such a valuable little life and which, wants to connect. with Which me. goes to my my point that chihuahuas are not dogs. Yeah, what? Continue. <laughs> Well, or or even if you have something bigger, like an elephant or something, you're like, oh, wow, it's majestic and you appreciate it. But you don't really think about like an ant. You just squish it as it walks by unless you get in there and like Ants Canada on YouTube, for example. You know what I mean? You start to see their lives, their personalities, their stories and, and okay. stuff. So, so on a surface level, size matters because we're – selfish we view the world through our own perspective you know and think that we know better but but then if you see something like really tiny doing something like what gets me is when animals are like self-sacrificing right like you see like the a dog centipede that, <laughs> well i was thinking like you know if a dog jumps in and saves something or whatever it's really brave you know you see that and like birds you don't really think much about little birds hopping around when you see them or anything But then you get to, like, in our backyard of our shop, we have those kill deer, and they lay their eggs on the ground, and they distract you by acting like their wing is broken. Right. And it's so cool when you sit down. Like, I never know where the eggs are, but I always stop walking for a minute so I don't crush them when I see a kill deer start acting like that. And I'm like, look at this bird, like, acting lame and flirting with predators. Come and get me. Come and eat me and risking its life to get away from its babies. And it's just like a little bird you don't think about for two seconds and now it's doing something great and all of a sudden the stature of the bird or the size of it doesn't matter Mm. because that's pretty stinking cool you know yeah yeah that was pretty impressive when I saw that uh, mother centipede start eating her young because she decided it wasn't going to be (laughs) <laughs> I saw that viable. video. Wasn't that whole, in Hawaii? Right? Yeah. And she's like, oh, oh, I'm my spot's been blown. Time to eat my babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and your perspective of her, her instantly changes. Yeah. No matter how big she is. Yeah, totally. And then, but then, and then also learning. You know, I, after I found her, I was like, oh, I want to learn, learn a little bit more about them. Things I might not know, which there's always something um, that you know. If it, I covered her back up, and I assume that once the stress factor was gone, she stopped devouring them and there are plenty to go around but what i learned is that the babies will eat her and that's part of the life cycle so self-defense not self well yeah self-defense she's eating them if she thinks they're I not gonna have make to it eat my children in self-defense soon <laughs> they're getting pretty out of hand no it wasn't self-defense it oh. was her she was eating the baby she's like if they're not gonna make it if this the big thing is gonna take us then i'm gonna i'm gonna just eat them rather than let them go to spoil with whatever is about to eat me and, and so take the energy back in it was like seemed to be the instinct versus knowing what was going to happen if I covered her back up they were going to eat her mm-hmm. it was just interesting anyway when you said personality is I was I immediately switched to thinking about people and not animals and like large personalities versus Animal small personalities animalities mm-hmm. not no personalities. personalities yeah not animals yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking like does that does that matter and I'd say yeah I mean, you know, big personality versus, like, somebody you you have to, like, pull and pry to figure out who somebody is. Right. Yeah. True. Or even if you have, I mean, we all know, like, somebody that's a large person but very gentle or a small person that's a punk or something like that. And those are kind of, like, well-suited. But if you have, like, a large person with a really abusive personality, that's terrifying. Yeah, you know, or people who are super small and demure or whatever, you almost have like sympathy for them automatically, even if nothing bad is happening. Mm. You know, like 
stand up for yourself. You know, you need to be self-advocating. You didn't like it. You finished it pretty quick. I finished it because I wanted to move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't bad. It got, it got a little better as it went, but I was kind of... Um, wait, do we get to find out what it is before we do the second one? I was thinking we'd move to the second one, then find out what they both are before the end. And figure out which one we like better first. Before it kind of tastes out. like grown-up, like wild turkey honey. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was feeling a little wild turkey esque, but also I was think I also thought like maybe like some it wasn't so young to like think it was like Oregon spirit or something horrendous like that, but it did seem a bit a little bit just a tad um grainy. So while you open up this one, let's <laughs> let's see where we where do we leave off? What well, was we're, our last episode about? Oh. Um it was one of two things. <laughs> There was uh, the episode that we did at your brother-in-law's, uh, your sister's house, in your brother-in-law's studio. That was the last one we no, did? No, I'm that? saying that oh. was close. I, I remember that one being close to the last one. Maybe not the last well, one. they've Had been through a lot, too. Brie and Julian. All yeah. Those anyway. Go so ahead. there was that one. Um, and I think maybe... Oh, oh it was um, with Duran and Matt out front of... Uh, the hotel after the yes, Anaheim right. or Pomona show. Yeah, that one wasn't worth listening to, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I, well, it I was... I don't remember much about it, but I think we just kind of, like, rapped for an hour. Yeah, there was that, and we did have a diving deep thing. It was like, you know, what if you could have another one of yourself or something, or a clone? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. It took fun. some weird turns. Yeah, that's because Matt was there. True. <laughs> Duran's down to come up with some weird ideas, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was just, we had, like, yeah, background. Anyway, that, that was the last one. Man. And so that was, yeah, that was the January, I think that, that must have been January Pomona. Wow. That's such a long time ago. <laughs> it was 10 months ago. Mm. Almost to the day. Because it was January 7th, 8th, and 9th, so it was, like, literally 10 months ago. Crazy. Huh. <coughs> yeah. So, 2023 has been probably the the hardest year of our lives, meaning like me and my family. You know, a lot of it was. Some of it was just stuff that was going on with our families, but a lot of it was coming through work and mm-hmm. reach out reptiles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and I don't mean like financially or whatever. Like, you know, we track, okay, how's the business doing? Do, 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 do. And we've grown this year as we have every year um, to about the same degree. You know, so for, I know a lot of people worry about the economy and what's it like and all this stuff. I always thought it was interesting. This is a little bit of a rabbit hole, but like people who are hobbyists who don't necessarily participate in the economy of the reptile keeping hobby as much talk the most about it. You ever notice that? Uh-huh. Like large businesses don't like, I mean, you just see cycles and and you go through them with your business, and that's... Yeah, that. no, I... I, I a hobbyist like, concur. oh, my gosh, what are banana ball pythons worth today? <laughs> what does this mean for the world? And it's yeah, like, no, probably I see that. nothing. I see that. Yeah, that's strange. I think maybe just too narrow of a focus or... Could too be. Much, too much worry, or maybe they just haven't been through enough. Like, I think if you have a, a, a much larger operation, this doesn't put anyone else down because you, you realize, like, any of us or just like anybody else. Like I was once just a kid with some reptiles in my bedroom, you know? Yeah. But now I'm that we have like that. Yeah. Well, but now that we have like thousands of snakes and, you know, quite a few employees, usually around like 10 to 12 employees working for us, um, which is not a very big business. They're much bigger reptile, you know, breeders, but with thousands of snakes, if one little economy is going down or like this morph, something's happening, well, it's, uh, we've got like 82 other morphs over here, you know what I mean? Or if that 
clutch didn't hatch or something, which would be devastating if it was one of two clutches you made that year. You know, it matters very little. It becomes like a numbers game. You're like, nah, we had a, you know, whatever, 80% hatch rate this year like other years, you know. <coughs> so, um, so you just don't, you just don't worry about that stuff as much. But anyway, that was a rabbit hole. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't economics or anything that directly affect us at all. But I do think it put a lot of people on edge. You know, I think a lot of people were feeling pinch, the pinch economically. And, you know, over the last few years, it's been very interesting in the reptile industry. It's been like unusually good during COVID. Yeah, yeah well, it was everybody's was best year ever was COVID. Right, yeah. getting fed paychecks from the government and everyone was ordering things online. If you were an online reptile retailer, you did well. Yep. So, um, so I think everyone was kind of like, became comfortable with the side hustle money mm. that they were getting, and then it went away. Mm-hmm. And maybe they had over-invested, or maybe they'd done this or that. Like, you kind of, like, gather up a bunch of mouths to feed and then don't have food to put in them or whatever. That can be stressful. I think that might have been some of it. But honestly, I can't figure all of it out. But I, I just feel like uh, 2023 in general has been one of the most drama-filled and toxic years uh, that I've ever seen. You know, some people would agree or disagree with me or whatever, but in the time I've been keeping, participating, whatever, in the reptile keeping hobby, it's been it's been very, very drama-filled and toxic with people, you know, just a lot of infighting within the different niches. And it's not just like, you know, reticulated pythons or superdors or anything. Cause like, you know, I think it was actually, <laughs> well, some, I mean, it, it was for us, but I know there was a lot of drama, like with the leopard gecko community this year, huh. there was, uh, you know, a lot of drama between shipping companies mm. this year. You know, there's a lot of drama between, you know, just, just different, uh, members of the industry fighting with each other okay. back and forth. I think it started what you were, I, what I believe you were referring to, like I think it was, was kind of like the the uh, animal abuse stuff that was going on with the pictures of that guy, mm -hmm. you know, surfacing at the beginning of the year that was like shocking and horrible and scared sure. everybody up. And that was coming right off the bat. The funny thing is that, well, I know it's not funny necessarily, but the interesting thing is that it was coming right off the back of what happened with the FWC in Florida. Um, mm, yeah. It was coming right off the back of that. You're right. It yeah, was. you're right. I, I, yeah. So like FWC putting all those animals down. I talked to the, the owner of those animals at the show this weekend. Did you meet him? I did not. Um, yeah, it was crazy to hear his side of the story. But yeah, there was that, and then and then all this animal abuse, and that was that was. I forgot about that kind of one two punch because it was like whiplash, you know. At first, it was like, oh, my gosh, look how horrible the government is. I can't believe they would do this, this murderous, abusive thing to reptile keepers. And it garnered a lot of support for the reptile industry. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, you know, all this stuff surfaced about, like, reptile abuse that was happening. Within? Within, like, a large reptile facility or whatever. Um, and so it's almost like... Man, if those people do that to their own animals, what do we care? Mm. You know what I mean? Maybe they should have everything taken away. And that was kind of like our fear. I don't think anyone outside the reptile industry probably put those things together and had those thoughts. But Well, there was something interesting. I mean, this is totally anecdotal, single happenstance at a, at a restaurant tonight. That, but we were sitting there, and it came up in conversation. The table next to us just happened to notice some... Um, I don't know if I'll go into the details of how or why, but like it, the idea, the talk of, of reptile breeding came up between tables, between our table and a table of people who were seemingly not involved whatsoever. Okay. And, and just it just came up like it was a natural flow of conversation that that came into that. And the, like, like the they one, were not here for the show. No, or part of no, absolutely company. not. They were locals. Yeah. They were local yeah. chi uh, Chicago, just Illinois residents eating in a restaurant. Yeah, and like their their one the one question they were like. Oh, and they bring doesn't it, they don't like stay in the dark all the time, like in, in that, and like it, there was like this kind of little bit of like concern, like for how it's how it's done. 
Oh, like do animals live in the dark? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, that's kind of tough because I think the you have a lot of facets to that. The general public doesn't understand needs and husbandry of animals. Sure. Right? So they'll assume, like they may literally only know how to take care of dogs. You know, right? And and then they go, well, that's probably how you should keep care of snakes or something. It's not that way. But, I mean, the other side of it is, um, you know, like commercial production or like if things look industrial. If you were giving the animal the same parameters of care, but the cage looked attractive or looked industrial, it would have two totally different, you know... Uh, it would come off two totally different ways totally. to a casual observer. Sure. And then the dark side of it too is that if it does become like a financial thing, and I don't honestly know a lot of people that do this, but clearly it does happen, where they're like, you know what, we got to cut corners to save money and compromise on husbandry to do that. Um, and you know, and like like what's considered okay today you know um i think the reptile industry is more responsible and ethical and concerned about the welfare of animals than ever before Mm -hmm. and i think we've made a lot of strides that way but but it seems like there are certain segments that kind of got left behind in that whole you know movement or evolution of thinking and so there's some some Segments that are just, you know, more needs to be done. And and you're going to see it a lot more as husbandry becomes more demanding with whatever species, right? So, like, for example, if you want to go look at horrible pictures of bearded dragons with MBD, there's no shortage of those pictures because they have a lot of really high requirements that a lot of people aren't used to, like providing UVB and supplementation in diet, right? And bearded dragons suffer from that a lot. Or something like a, a mainland reticulated python is a very large and active animal. So if it's not provided for that, and they're like, nah, that's okay. You know what I mean? You, you start to think, mm, is that okay? You know? Yeah. Do, do we need to stay being okay with this, or do we need to get better? So, yeah, anyway, a lot of shock with that kind of stuff. And then there's certain people that, you know, just don't like us for whatever reason to try to drag us into that when i mean you got heavily targeted specifically yeah so with the whole animal abuse thing yeah and it was actually the uh, on the tail end of many other accusations but because the animal thing became big news in the industry the targeting of us spread more than anything else did because Right before that, the same people who were accusing us of having something to do with it, which, you know, like we're not affiliated with this guy in any way or anything, but our face would p- be put on memes and stuff next to that guy to try to make us look bad while everyone was hating him. The same kind of things happened before in regards to, you know, ridiculous things like domestic violence. Whoa, there's Garrett. You know what I mean? Like domestically being violent or something or approving of it and you know, just outrageous claims, and it was like nobody actually believed any of that stuff or listened to it, and, you know, I didn't listen to it or anything. It didn't really have any effect. But then when this one happened, everyone's like, <gasps> shocker, oh, my gosh, you know. And people who don't know us, you know, that's one thing. Like, you don't know us. You don't know what to believe or whatever. But we, you know, there were second, third, fourth-hand conversations, you know, playing telephone game of who we are or what we do and how we're involved happening. And fortunately, we're... Super open and really well known. So there were a lot of people, you know, if someone said something outrageous, like, oh, yeah, it turns out, did you hear, by the way, Reach Out Reptiles is super abusive to their animals. And then there'd be people like, well, I don't know. I was on an hour long live stream with him last week where I was walking through his facility and everything looked awesome. Or, "Eh, I don't know. I just filmed a YouTube video at his place two weeks ago, you know, and everything was awesome. Or we just had Retic Fest and, you know, 250 people from all around the world come hung out with everything that we have. You know what I'm saying? So there was, there was people that stood up for it. But the part that was, um, I think, personally bothered me 
You know, I like to be the guy that never gets bothered by anything. But the one that bothered me was, like, people who were, like, you know, gee, you were, you really do know me quite well. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people that you interact with as either a YouTuber or a reptile breeder or something like that where they are customers or viewers or whatever, but they participate so much they, they're, like, pushing borderline like you're my friend now, right? Especially someone like me who's too busy to have actual friends. So, um, yeah, when those people were like, you know what, I'm not going to associate with you anymore. I'm just going to keep my distance from you right now because you're going through stuff. I was like, wow, gee, thanks. That feels great. You know what I mean? I'm glad you're siding with, you know, gossip and rumors on the Internet instead of you, me who you've been participating in life with for the past three years. Like, you know me. If, if this was going on, wouldn't you have noticed or said something you know what I mean and so it's like even if they didn't believe it because actually now that a lot of that's blown over everyone's come back and they're like let's do business with you again but it's you know it changes when that happens because I'm like all right well I kind of see what you were really here for all along you know you like that we lift you up. We like that you that we add value to your animal breeding program or that we have connections you can make use of or a discount to offer you. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. if we're being personally attacked, you're like, I'm going to go ahead and stand back and let those people kick you down while you're down for a bit while I decide what I want to think about you. It's like, wow. Thanks, guys. Yeah. It's a, it's a bummer. It's, um, yeah, it's weak. It's weak. <clears throat> but this shows you how fearful people can be of, of you know, I guess it ties in with cancel culture a little bit. And they're like, oh, oh yeah. I don't want to be, uh, you know, I don't, want, I, don't want that to, I don't want that to happen to me. Right. And if I'm associating and then maybe I'm going to get thrown under that same bus just by being there. Right, and even when you know it's all fake and there's yeah. nothing, you know. Yeah, you know what it it reminded me of? Um, I'm always making, pulling analogy from like superhero movies and stuff like that because that's kind of, probably Stan Lee <laughs> had a lot to do with um, my formation of, you know, truth and justice and good and evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? As much as the Bible or <laughs> church and stuff did because, you know, superhero movies are fun and surfacy and silly and fantasy, right? But at the same time, his stuff was always, like, rooted in serious issues. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the Mr. Rogers of fantasy, you know, entertainment. Totally. Um, but uh, there was the Spider-Man movie where Spider-Man was just tired. I always love Spider-Man the best. I, I relate to him the most because he, he's got... With great power comes great responsibility. And this gets I, I, I beat read, up by the world. I read mostly Spider-Man comic books. Just yeah, that was also. Yeah, he's just get he just gets beat up. And Venom, I uh, Venom by by, that, him yeah, as well. Just because that would fit in that same world, but. right? But there was in one of the movies. Remember the one? I can't remember which one it was, but it was one of the Tobey Maguire ones. Maybe second one or third one. He kind of like loses his powers mentally for a while because mm-hmm. he wants to stop being Spider-Man. Right. And then he tries to get back, and he, like, kind of lost it, and he has to find his way back. But there was one point where he's, you know, just willingly not being Spider-Man, and who can blame him, you know, because he takes so much dirt for it all the time. But there's a scene where there's, like, a kid in an alley getting beat up by some other kids, and he's like, help, help, and there's, like, three, four bullies just beating up on this kid. And he looks at it, and it's a situation where you did not have to even be Spider-Man to help that situation. They didn't have knives or guns. It's bullies beating the kid up. And he's the kid's getting knocked down and kicked and looking over and asking for help. And he just turns away from it and walks away. That point of that movie was like, I remember when I was in the movie theater, I saw it, I was like, oh, that's dirty, slimy. It felt gross. You know what I mean? You're not denying this, you know, hey, I rebranded myself as a blue and red web slinging hero. It's just you're being gross now. You're not 
that's not. You might have been that guy's hero in a moment if you stopped him from bullying or something like that. But you should just do that as a decent human being. And maybe you'll get punched or something in the teeth or whatever. But like, you should do that as a, a decent human being, you know. So, and I would do that. I would do that. I have done that for other people, whether online or in person or anything like that. So, yeah, in 2023, starting around the beginning, you know, I felt a bit like that kid, you know. I'm like, whoa, help. Except it wasn't one guy looking in an alley. It was like, where's the 30,000 followers, you know, on YouTube, the 100,000 followers on Instagram, you know, people that I... It's weird. I mean, you know this. You, like, live publicly. It's our choice to do that. We turn the camera on right now and record ourselves. But you, you choose to be very public with what you do. Good, bad, and ugly. Um, and for the most part, you know, like, we've always tried to be very, you and I especially, authentic and vulnerable and honest, right, on camera and stuff like that. So if somebody criticizes stuff, they're not criticizing some TV character or something. They're criticizing you directly, right? And a lot of people do not have to live up to that scrutiny by their own choice. I realize, like I said, it's our choice to do mm -hmm. that. But by their own choice, they can quietly be scumbags all they want and not have anyone criticize them because they get away with it because nobody knows it. But when you shine a light on who you are authentically... Um, people, you know, have the ability to do that, right? So, anyways, it's, I just think it's, uh, you know, it's gross when they choose to do that because, I don't know about you, but I don't try to be honest or authentic when I have those kind of like real moments and stuff on whether it's YouTube or whatever, this podcast. I don't do that so that I can... Create something, sell something, you know what I mean? Trick somebody or any of that kind of stuff. I do that because I realize if I'm struggling with something right now and I'm open and honest about it, it might help somebody else who's also struggling. And I know that I'm like, I can take a beating. And I'm a pretty tough, right? Guy when it comes to taking life's beatings, right? Whether they're physical or emotional or whatever. Um, but other people, you know, might not be that strong in that way right now and really need to hear that someone else is going through things as well so that they don't feel alone. That's why I do it. I know you've had a lot of messages like that, you know, before, because I've watched them in times where, like, I was weaker or whatever, and you are like, hey, I went through this, and or I am going through it. And sometimes it's like, here's the solution, or you'll get through it too. And sometimes it's like... I don't know if there's a solution. This is just what is right now, you know? And I want to openly share it with you so that you can see we're not perfect or whatever, you know? Like, humans have struggles. So, anyway, yeah, it's it was, it was weird. That's been the undertone, and it was set up pretty early in the year from some of that stuff. Like I said, it's not the people who attack. They're just usually gross people that are being gross, and you can count on them to do that. But it is the people that have been, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm being 100% authentic and open with them and they have limited contact with me or whatever, but it seems like they're appreciating that and participating in that. And then when things go bad, they're like, I'm going to actively turn away from you now. You know what I mean? Whether it was something that I actually did or didn't actually do at all, still doesn't feel good. Like if you make a mistake and someone's like, I don't forgive you this time, goodbye. You know, that doesn't feel good. You're like, well, geez, me, you know, man, I did make a mistake, you know? But, you know, I was hoping for a little mercy or something. You didn't expect me to be perfect, right? And I was, you know, whatever. So, yeah, either way, that was kind of the, the undertone of the year for me. And then there were a lot of details and physical things that have happened since then that maybe those kinds of things happened like obstacles, for the business or life or things like that. Maybe those things happen all the time anyways, but I have kind of a strength of community that typically holds me up that helps me get through those things. Um, because when, when people are 
helping us, encouraging us. Like I have a whole wall of letters written by people like kids to adults, all ages. Thank you for what you do. Blah, 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 blah. I keep all that crap. <laughs> yeah, me you too. Know, oh, so much of it. And I go through it. It sits right, like if I turn to the right in my desk, a bunch of it is right there. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I'm like just, oh, I just need to remember there are still some people out there holding me up. You know, and, and we always are like, I at least try. It's not that I, I'm never as effective as I'd like to be, but I always try to help to hold things up. You know, I mean, the U.S. arc thing started with it was a your idea of yours. Like all the YouTubers should get together and help U.S. arc have a YouTube presence. And, you know, Phil originally approached me to do one video and I said, you need someone to commit. I'll do it for a year. And we did it for almost two you know what I mean? Um, so we're trying to hold them up. And we get criticized for that stuff, too. You know? Or uh, trying to hold um, breeders up by saying, hey, look, you know, people that are like, okay, I have one snake and I'd like to try hobby breeding. Or I am a hobbyist breeder and I'd like to try to take the jump to becoming a professional breeder. Am I le Like, when I say professional breeder, I mean I'm going to leave my job and do this instead. And we've helped them with everything from, you know, networks, sending customers people's way, sponsors to YouTube videos, people, you know, like trying to help anybody with whatever network we can. I mean, just last night we're sitting in the living room. I was talking taxes with people and how to do that legitimately. Anything that we've learned that we can help. Um, so we always do that. So, yeah, it kind of feels like, you know, when you have a bunch of people turn around and spit in your best effort, you know, spit in your face despite your best efforts, you know, it's like, yeesh. So it just makes the physical things like a lot harder, you know. Well. That and I'm just overworked. Sure. That's, that's what happened since then, you know, just in the business we had a lot of full time. I went. Uh, in the last 60 days, from five full-time employees, a bunch of part-timers, to one full-time employee, you know. So uh, that's, what, 160 hours a week of work? Is that right? 120? No, 160 hours. Yeah, it's a lot. Of it's week. a lot. We're on Garrett's plate now. Yeah. You know. And my the, the, the rest of the staff, who have been amazing, like, really cool, the staff that is sticking around and they've been very flexible taking on new tasks and stuff so I very much appreciate them Joe Hadley Thomas you know yeah all those guys well, if, I, if I was in a spot where I had any spare helping time I would a lot of people have said that yeah yeah a lot of people have said that and I, I do appreciate that but it's a lot of times not realistic too and it's not always something that's like I've got this thing to do and someone can come help, you know, like having the right job to give someone to help you is challenging sometimes. Sure. Cause sometimes it's just like, I just need to, I just need to be, well, you and I both been traveling on weekends a lot lately. I don't think I've had a day off and I lot, you know, I know I got up to two months or something like that. You know? Yeah. So I'm past that now. No, I'm I'm with you, man. At least but, the next few weeks, I won't have one. Yeah, I'm 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 with you. I mean, my work life balance, as you know, is kind of I've, I've been blessed with a pretty healthy thing of that. But I've also been like my my ability to say no to stuff is limited, especially when it's in front of me. You know, so I'm really saying notice stuff that's like a plane flight away, a little easier. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not getting on that plane. Right. But if it's, it's stuff that's around. Hey, neighbor. Yeah. Hey, neighbor. Yeah. I'm building that deck. <laughs> or I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. You've been having a hustle pretty hard lately, too, it seems. Yeah. yeah it's been, definitely been some some hard hustle. And I, and I can appreciate it. And I can. I've been, you know, the Lord has given me perspective to be enjoying even the struggle parts, you know, which is crazy. I, he's kind of always done that for me even before I knew it, honestly. You know, there have been spots where it's like, I mean, I think of times when I'm like literally talking buddies, talking to a friend from, you know, 
taking the gun away from his head over the phone while I'm in prison. <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah. So it's like yeah, there's a, he's always giving me that kind of perspective. Like it's it's okay. I think God loves us even if we don't believe or know that there's a God. Yeah. You know, you know what I think of? You've been on herping trips with me uh, and the guys out in Phoenix. And we find that like thirsty rattlesnake in the Phoenix desert during a drought. And they'll like crack the water bottle open and drip on its head. And the rattlesnake is drinking and stuff like that. And it's like, it's always cool when you see a desert creature. You're like, wow, man, you have like a crazy tough life, but you're perfectly adapted to it. And it's amazing. But sometimes, like, remember that Western Diamondback that was real skinny on the side of the road we found when it was me, you, Clint, mm-hmm. Dave, mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the, the locals. Yeah. Um, but, no, Noah was there, too. That was cool. Yeah, your son was there. And that snake was skinny, and that snake was in trouble. It was dehydrated. It did not look good. And, yeah, and we are able to, like, water it and stuff like that and just, just give it a little little boost hang in there buddy you are good at what you do you know you're an inspiration i know most people see you and want to kill you but i see what what you are i see your value and that's awesome and and you got to keep going i'm gonna give you a little refreshment little mm-hmm. drink of water right now to keep going and it's cool for us to be that and i think that god sees us that way even when no one else does you know mm-hmm. what i mean it was sometimes we're the thirsty rattlesnake and it's like, I'm dying in this desert. What's going on? And it's like, no, listen, man, you're an inspiration. You're, you're good at what you do. Just watching you makes me feel better about my life. Not in a comparison way, but like that I can do it too. Because I see you out there doing it. And I think God, like I said, whether you believe in him or not or whatever, I think sometimes he'll... I'll just reach out and give you a little refreshment. Yeah, common common Some, grace is how I understand it. Sometimes you don't even notice it, you know, and we focus on the people who are, like, wanting to kill us, you know, metaphorically, if we're mm. a rattlesnake. But, um, and we may not notice that this water dripping on our head is coming from, <laughs> you know, a herper or something like that, <laughs> or God in that case. Uh, we may not recognize that, but the herper still cares and God still loves his creation. Mm. And you're very important to him. And there's other people that, you know, you're very important to, too. So, yeah, you got to remember that stuff. And that's, truthfully, I mean, I've learned that many times I'm old now. You know what I mean? I feel older than 40, but, you know, I feel more like, I don't know. I, I, my dog years are adding up. But, um, yeah, I've been through a lot of times, like, dry times in life. And uh, I know that God cares and I know that I should be here and do these things and it's just hard when you do them for people and they turn around and spit in your face but the, I think you know this time of life or what I'm going through right now the lesson is like you didn't do that for them mm-hmm. you might have done something for them mm-hmm. right but it doesn't matter whether they appreciate it or not mm. because you know, my motivation in doing those things is for, I do those things for me because it's who I want to be, you know, <clears throat> and who I want to be is like the person that God has been for me. Mm. I've been watered in the desert, so I want to water other people, even if, you know, they would bite the hand that feeds them, so to speak, cut off their nose to spite their face if they're that kind of a person. But... um I'm helping them because I want to be a helpful person, you know, even if they're going to be, you know, just not receive it. Well, you never know, too, when that person, when it's going to be that person that is really needing that water in that moment. You know, it's a little more obvious when it's a rattlesnake out in the desert. It's like pretty obvious, like, okay, you need some water. But if you're, aiming to have the character that you're aiming to have in what you've done and, and, and what you're doing to do that, to, to water people, um, whether they know they need it or not and whether they appreciate it or not, chances are there's going to be somebody that really needs it and you may not even know that they need it as bad as they do, but the fact that you're there willing to do it is, the thing, is what they needed the most in that moment. I had no idea, so this morning was very encouraging yeah, we had a pretty cool little group chat this morning before yeah. the show. 
Yeah, little little fellowship action. So I, I came back and uh, and sat down. I, I ran to the bathroom before we started going to that the uh, worship song, and came back and there, you know there's that that girl that it sat down in the spot that I was at, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll just come and squeeze kind of in close between you guys and you know get my little spot back. And I didn't know who she was. I'd, I'd never met her before, um, but we went into that worship song and. It was apparently exactly where she needed to be, was right there, right there. Well, for, for people that didn't, don't know what you're talking about, I don't know how they, it, this was the first one I went to, but was it John Feely that kind of started this stuff? Um, was it you? It was, uh, I, I mean, I, the first, the, well, apparently there's been some that have happened before. The, the other couple that came down that does like the wood carvings, Ben and Sue, mm, yeah. um, they apparently had times when, like, I guess it, um, Daytona. They've had times where they actually got, where, you know, I don't know if it was, um, um, oh my God, why is Space in his name right? Wayne. I don't know if it was Wayne that gave him the room or whatever, but they've been like, they've had moments, I guess, where they've had whole rooms and had like full services at reptile shows. Yeah. Um, so it's not like it's the first of its kind necessarily, even though it feels that way for me and, and us maybe. Yeah. Um, but the first one for me was at, at Pomona. I just kind of, I think a couple people prompted me, you know, like w- it would be cool if we had a little fellowship thing. So I, I organized it and kind of put the the beacon out and was like, let's let's meet up and, and do that. So same thing with... It was basically a bunch of us getting together just intentionally like, hey man, you know, we're here in the reptile industry. I think the goal is to like uplift and, and strengthen one another and stuff like that. So... Yeah, the way it went down this morning was ended up being kind of cool. Like everyone just sort of went around the circle and told what's been going on in their lives lately, you know. So I, I didn't know most of the people in the circle, but well, I, maybe I knew half of them or something. But there was quite a few that I didn't. And, uh, you know, they talked about what was going on in their lives and good, bad, and ugly yep. kind of thing. Give everybody the opportunity to do, you know, what you and I do in our videos sometimes and stuff. And, uh, yeah, and then it was, was kind of cool, and people were giving each other little encouraging things, whether it was a scripture verse or just a pat on the shoulder or, you know what I mean, like hang in there. Got some people had lost loved ones. People had, you know, are out of work right now. People are, you know, just struggling. The world's tough right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was kind of cool. And then we, we sang a little uh, praise song, mm-hmm. right? And then... Uh, and we kind of all, you know, just said a, a prayer and off to the reptile show. Yeah. And it was kind of cool. It was cool to set it up that way. Yeah, well, I stayed. It was it, it was cool. The whole thing was awesome. And the, the late Holly was her name. Um, she had, I'm not, I don't want to dive too much into it, but she was, she had a lot. She had a lot. a lot. She had a lot. And, um, but she was, you know, the Lord placed her right there in that spot where she needed to be. Yeah. Whereas it's possible that, you know, she wouldn't have pulled through on her own. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's wild. You don't, you know, you never, you never know. No. You, you never know. What I mean, you... I know I needed it this morning. I don't think it would be something I didn't pull through, but it's also like a balance. Like, you know, I'm here in Chicago. My wife and kids are at home. Mm-hmm. I've got a few days at home and then I'm off to the next place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I miss my wife. I miss my kids. And mm-hmm. we we're working extra hard to make the reptile business survive, which I like this business. I obviously love my animals and customers and friends and stuff that we've made. But I can't put all that above my family. What kind mm-hmm. of father would I be, right? So that's the thing that's, that's pretty tough because it's like, well, I can work the extra... 160 hours in a week, you know what I mean? Get the jobs done, not put that many hours in, but it does take a lot of hours. And uh, that's a strain on the people who do love me unconditionally and support me and through everything, which is my wife, Ashley, my kids. You know what I mean? I mean, my kids, it's got to be bad because my kids are usually oblivious and they want to play and all that kind of stuff or whatever. But I come home and the three older ones, even Finley, you know, little guy, he's in kindergarten. They're like, are you okay, dad? Like, work okay today? Are you all right? 
and you know they'll ask like hey you know we'll be like oh you know what are you guys doing this weekend or whatever on the weekends that I have been home and even the weekends I've been home I've been doing like tours in the facility and stuff like that or, or working on stuff to stay on top of it and so they'll be like um, well what do you want to do dad do you want us to go to work with you like we could clean cages or something you know, and it's like, you know, they, they know that those are things you have to do. Like, you know, you have animals, and so it doesn't matter how short you get. Animals got to get clean to have water, be fed, you know. So, yeah, that's how I know I, I'm pushing it because the kids are, like, worried, you know. So, and they usually don't worry, which they shouldn't have to. They're kids, you know, they're doing their childhood. They got a lot of, my girls are both in middle school. That's tough, being a girl in middle school. They got a lot of things they're going through. So if they worry about me and the business more than the stuff they're going through, it's probably starting to show. (laughs) So, yeah. And I know even my wife tried to call me and just catch up with me tonight, and we had just sat down to dinner uh, with everybody, you know, after the show. I'm getting the staff fed we're all exhausted it's been a long weekend we just packed up the booth and put it all away and everything and after talking to all those people and she called and she's like well hey you know and starts talking so what are you doing i'm I'm like well i'm just just sitting down to dinner and she's like okay well have a good dinner bye you know and she always does that short bye click you know what i mean and it's like oh man it's not like she's mad at me she's not trying to do stuff but i can tell she was disappointed because she probably wants to just talk for a while. And she happened to call while I'm also trying to take care of staff and volunteers. and You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you Listen, know, it's just like, put me off and deal with those guys. I, I know it's a little tad late for this one, but I mean, I would say next time, just, uh, just making sure that's still recording. Um, just walk away from the table for a few moments. <laughs> The staff Mm -hmm. and volunteers will be fine at the table with each other. Yeah. Yep. And if you ever need any advice on other stuff like that, you can always just hit me up and I've (laughs) I've got it. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, No, yeah, I'm not, I mean, you know, obviously. So the thing is, you know, how many moments do I need? How much does my family deserve me? Right. And, you know, why is it when stuff gets, when things are good, everything's good. You know, the balance is all right. I work hard, but I'm also, I play hard. You know, me and my kids, I mean, you know, it's like every weekend we're out herping and playing in the creek or going swimming or doing something fun. You know, <clears throat> even when I've been working, I remember on the 4th of July this year was a good opportunity for me to get some work in because everyone was off of work. And the three older kids went with Ashley to go do something. I had Finley, the little little guy, and I brought him with me up to the shop, and I had to build a bunch of cages because I was trying to upgrade a bunch of animals' living spaces, right? And I needed a day with no staff asking me questions, you know, to just sit down and actually get these cages built. Uh, but I had my five-year-old with me too, and I managed to, so I took the 4th of July and built cages all day for 14, 16 hours or whatever, and he got to watch a movie, and I taught him how to ride a bike, (laughs) and we had a picnic, and we caught some frogs, you know what I mean? Like, while I got a bunch of cages built, and so that's, a, I think, a a good day of, like, crap. We got a lot of work to do. I still need to be a dad, and I got, Mm -hmm. like, so many cool... He's just so cute, you know, riding a, he rides a bike, like, that's a big moment for any kid, but Finley is, like, the man who has been attracted to anything with wheels since he was born, so to have his own wheels taking him where he wants to go, he's just in his element. It's awesome to see. It's really cool to see his passion for that, and, you know, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I love that story. That's a good one. Yeah. That's an example of me doing it right. Yeah. Dinner, dinner tonight is me doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you get something right, you get something wrong, bro. Yeah. You know? What's going on with you the last 10 months? <laughs> Mine has been a bit less dramatic. 
you know. Dramatic? A little or traumatic. A little li- a bit less dramatic. You sure? I mean, <laughs> it depends on how you. I mean, uh, I would say maybe less traumatic. Maybe less. <laughs> but I don't think your last ten months have been any less dramatic. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you might be right there. All right. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. Fill us in. A little less dramatic. <laughs> a little, little less traumatic. Yeah. Plenty dramatic. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's been, it's been a little more. Rough um, financial. I'm not really super open with my financial stuff. Well, I guess sometimes I am. I've always been open to the fact yeah, that I'm I don't a financial. Know what you're talking about. I'm a financial dunce. <laughs> that that is a fact. That is a. Uh, and I don't care how many business lessons you try to give me. I don't care how many of my best friends are business gurus and <laughs> I geniuses. I refuse to learn. <laughs> it's not that I refuse to learn. <laughs> it's that I'm <laughs> apparently incapable. I refuse to implement. I'm incapable of. Uh, you know, what I've learned of, of applying that specific skill set to to uh, reality, apparently, and so there there is that. I mean, you know, there was the I, mi- I missed a fair amount of opportunities out there for things that I would have been doing, you know, but but made up for them in the life experiences with the family. You know, I mean, I didn't go a lot of places because Hillary was pregnant, and then having the baby. There were a lot of things I didn't go to because of that. Um, Having Probably a, the right choice. Yeah, having a fourth child is uh, there is some drama there certainly. Um, there is, uh, as you well know, more than most people, because a yeah. fourth. <laughs> um, Yours that. looks a lot happier than mine. <laughs> He's pretty happy. He's a pretty happy little dude. And then just uh, you know, being called into this ministry role just recently. That's that's not so much ten months as in more than month, last month and a half, but. Um, I'm just trying to trying to balance all that out and and feel it out because I I am pretty sensitive to what's happening in the world around me and so the, the all the drama that you're talking about that's happening in the rental industry even though it definitely was not focused on me it doesn't make me feel it any less you know especially if it's happening to like it's just, it's just ugly stuff ugly stuff you know what happened to my and especially when it is a little closer to me because of how you know focused in it was on on you you know I. I Try to do a little bit of what part I could to like help sh- share some support and and be Thank whatever you. kind of light I could be in there and you know ha- have your back to whatever thing I could or whatever I was needed you know um, yeah. um and you know but it did it did there were times when I was like I don't even want I don't even want to be part of this anymore you know yeah, it makes you question yeah uh, there was times I was just like this is is it, this isn't this isn't worth it I could just like do something where but you know, you also wonder like how much would any other specific industry or, or job like have you know similar things happening maybe? Because I like to be involved well, and open and, and authentic as you do and be. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's not the industry; it's your level of ownership. Level of ownership and involvement. And yeah. Most casual observers in the reptile industry like to talk a big game, but they don't have any level of ownership. Mm. You know what I mean? They're not they're not in the trenches when they need to be. And doing that kind of stuff, and mm. there, there's certainly people who are, yeah. But, but the, I mean, those are leaders, and there's usually fewer leaders than followers. Yeah. So I, I end up throwing myself into some spots where I don't have to. You know, I could easily just be like, eh, I don't need to be, involve myself in this. But I, I do, gen- but I yeah. do genuinely care mm. about about it and where it's headed. And I don't, you know, as much as I say like. You know, I have moments of thinking about, oh, I don't need to do this. I just, I just dig out and, like, you know, I have to deal with this drama. It's like, no, I want to step in and, like, help out where I can and mend whatever I'm able to through mediation and talking to people and, you know, and being involved and caring. So that's You stressful. know what I think it's like? It definitely feels like this when you're going through stuff. It's like a burden, right? It's like something heavy that you're carrying, right? And so when you see drama and things falling apart all around you you know people love to drop the little gif of like michael jackson eating popcorn like he 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 i'm just gonna sit here and watch the drama because it's entertainment for me Mm. but it's for the person who's actually carrying the load i mean imagine if if somebody was carrying something that's much too heavy for them and you're watching this happen you know what i mean they're they're about to get crushed drop it be injured or something like that they're feeling that load and yeah, you can sit back and watch what happened. It could be spectacularly destructive. 
and that would be entertaining. But if you are doing the right thing, I think when you see those dramatic, you know, situations, you should jump in and share the load. You know what I mean? Offer some piece of perspective or wisdom that the mob is missing. Or, you know what I mean? Provide your personal experience with someone, you know, and say, hey, listen, you know, you guys are all talking about, you know, whether it's Garrett or whoever, you know what I mean? You guys are all talking about this person. Um, but I have actually talked to this person. And let me tell you how that went. Mm. You know, or whatever. You know? Yeah, totally. That's like stepping in and let me grab that corner of something. You, I don't want this to fall. I don't want this to explode. I don't want this to become, you know, to be destroyed. Yeah. So let me shoulder some load, which is unpleasant. Like you're saying, maybe I'll just walk away and let it fall down because that looks really heavy. And maybe for the one person, it's impossibly heavy. For two, it'd be really uncomfortably heavy. But if everybody jumped in and helped, it would be nothing. Mm. It would be fine. Totally. Yeah, so that that kn knowing that there are folks out there that are one, that, that there are people, you know, like you said, those letters that come in and they have to the side of your desk, and I get I get plenty of those. And when I, when I get one of those, I I let people. I'm, I'm like, listen, they're, they're like, I didn't want to bother you. I didn't want to like you know do this or that. And was, but I just wanted to say this, and I was, and like, I hope it's not weird. Is it what I get a lot? You know that 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 sentiment. And I'm like, thank you for reaching out and saying something. Thank you for the tiny word of encouragement that you offered today uh, you don't have yeah. no idea how much i needed that you know what i mean like you <laughs> uh, you're right bro yeah i'm good i'm good <laughs> it's just it, it just touches me that, that, that there are people out there that that do really care that much that, to just like make risk being awkward and weird you know as they have said like that and and going there and just being like mm, they do and it's, it it's huge it makes all it the other the day world. i can't remember the last time i wrote a letter to someone like on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope and mailed it but the other day i wrote like a two and a half three page letter to a six-year-old <laughs> who wrote a letter to me and i was like this is freaking awesome i just sat down it took me forever i have so much to do but i'm like this kid's getting a letter <laughs> yeah. priority number one right now you know yeah. It's, that was it's, awesome. It's beautiful, and uh, there's there's a lot and there's a lot of that happening, and I've I've seen a lot of that um, happen this year in particular, um, which is encouraging. I, I would never as as much as sometimes I would think you know have those those creeping thoughts you know uh, of oh just leave it you know it, it it wouldn't actually happen. I couldn't you know right. it's not it's not well you know as much as we're like you know i feel being a little bit of self-pity party at least on my behalf right now <laughs> <clears throat> there's a lot of people with a lot of stuff it was way worse oh yeah going oh yes yeah. oh yes absolutely and you know it's you know i've i've been in very blessed to be in a position to at, at least as much as I'm able to be there for them or, you know, offer a kind word, you know, like, I mean, Brian Barchek comes to mind, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, and like seeing him at Animal Con and hanging with him. And I can't tell you how many little texts I send him and, oops, am I losing the mic? Uh, just, you know, those, <laughs> those hugs are traumatic for uh, <laughs> lav mics. <laughs> uh, yeah, going to Animal Con and hanging with them. But even beyond that, I'll, I'll say like, hey, you know, I just want to let you know we were eating dinner tonight. My five-year-old said, please be with Brian Barczyk and heal him when no doctors can. I'm like, that's heavy. I don't even know if that's good for him to hear or not, you know, but I'm going to send it and, you know, until he tells me to stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, because maybe he needs it right now. I don't know. And stuff like that, so... Yeah, that's a part of it too. Is it's just like yeah, you know, it just adds to an overall sadness. You know, I like to see my friends suffer. Yeah, at all. Well, well, Brian. I mean, yeah. I mean, like you said, we're having. I was feeling pretty sorry for you there for the last thirty minutes. Uh, but now but you don't. <laughs> now I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, suck it up, Buttercup. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. Um, it's I true. mean, Brian. Yeah, I mean, Brian in particular. I mean, everything he's. He's been going. Through, I mean, because he was instrumental in, like, being a leader for me. 
in how oh, whatever he's instrumental now. You know, yes, he's I mean? been, he has been. There's since people the who are watching their first Brian Barczyk video today. Yeah, you know what I mean, and falling in love with reptiles. Yeah, which is helping all of us be able to live the kind of lives that we want to with right. these animals. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I watch people do the same thing with him. You know, like they just like want to tear him down you know it's, that's happened plenty of times you know even if he gave right. him some reason sometimes but just knowing who he was as a person just how many times he was literally the guy that was willing to offer the shirt off his back mm -hmm. to me so not not just being a leader in like um you know take caring for the reptile world and like putting himself out there and, and being a big presence out there helping just just the one-on-one -on -one person stuff where nobody's looking nobody knows What's happening? There's not a single camera on anywhere, and there's not, not sure. a single person that's going to know what's happening except for just me, the one other person that happens to be in the world next to him in that moment. And he's just like, "Listen, I know we just met, but like, you, you, you come, you can come crash in my hotel room because you, you're going to Tinley tomorrow too, and you, you have nowhere to stay, mm. or you know, or you just flee your drone into the side of that bridge, and I watched you do it, but." Yeah, you go ahead and fly mine for the rest of the trip. The second, like yeah. two seconds after I just like, demolished He's such one. a generous person. Like, yeah. We were literally sitting outside having cigars, and James Green, the guy you were saying was bringing us all whiskey and stuff, he sat down, and I'd never heard this story before. James Green, for those of you that don't know, I usually, like I, I'm always hustling, and I have been since the beginning, so when I first started vending Tinley, I had no staff or volunteers or anything, and I would do it all myself. You know, the first Tinley I attended, Everyone Likes My Pallet Wood booth, I built half of it with all my power tools at the booth the day before the show. And so James Green is like, well, I got a couple kids and we can come help you. And just like pushing carts back and forth and stuff. He's always done that. So anyway, an hour ago or just before this podcast started, we're sitting out on the porch and he goes, you know, I know you because of Brian Barczyk. And I was like, what? Really? And he's like, Yeah. He goes, uh, my kids are big Barczyk fans, and I used to go, every time we would stop in at the Reptarium, I'd take a picture with my son and Barczyk, and you could see my son getting older, you know, in each picture or whatever, and they thought that was cool. And he said, and, and Barczyk was just talking about good people in the industry, and he brought you up, talking about me. Like, Barczyk just said, yeah, Garrett, he's a good guy. You, you should get to know him. And he's like, so I took him at his word and reached out to you, and and then I saw you there and you needed help and I helped you. And he's literally been helping us ever since. Yeah. And I'm like, I never knew that. I was like, why is Brian Barczyk even talking me up? I don't understand that. Yeah. I he mean, has nothing to gain from it. We don't have any business relationship. He's not a sponsor. I don't sponsor him or anything. He just was having a conversation with someone, talking about good people and brought my name up. So I just think that's pretty cool, you know what I mean? That you know, because a lot of people, especially people that get a lot of attention, they work hard to get a lot of attention. So they're like, "Let's keep the attention on me, shall we?" I worked hard to get here, but Barczyk's not like that. He's like, "Oh, good. I'm glad you could make it. Let's take the picture you want for your son. Also, let me shout someone else to, out to you that can't repay me for this favor, but I'm gonna just show a little love his way. So it's it's crazy. Yeah." I don't think there's a lot of people that do that for other people. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Especially not in 2023. <laughs> so, man. Crazy. What do you think, Mike? Mike Titula, everybody. Just walked in the room while we were podcasting. What's your take on it? I'm an innocent bystander. I'm a... <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here. I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking about everybody come in and make a bunch of noise before we ended this thing, but you know, it was just a thought. <laughs> we should just get everyone in here for a big group shot at the end. Yeah. So everyone can fast forward to the end of the episode and see it on camera. Yeah. You oh, wanna, before you we grab everybody. Before we do, yeah, while you're doing that, uh, let's find out what the whiskey was we were drinking. How about oh, yeah. that? Good, good call. Yeah, give us like two minutes. Yeah. Let's see. So the first one, I, I really like the second one better. I have no idea how to end this episode. This was the second one? That was the second one. Um, I, I don't know how we end this episode I don't know how we start episodes. That's just <laughs> how we roll. <laughs> um, it just seemed like it was, uh, there was a lot of processing. I think it's not, it's not going to end 
on this podcast. We'll probably have to do another podcast before <laughs> 10 months go by. Oh, well, we are going to see each other in like two weeks. Uh-oh. I think because I, I know I don't that have sounds a... sounds like we traveled too much. <laughs> I don't have a plane ticket yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to make it, especially since mm. I keep seeing posts with my face on it. Mm. Uh, or, you know, not just my face, but... I did I call can't. and tell you that... <laughs> You can stay in my hotel room and drive around my rental car. I appreciate it. Well, then I will, I will take you up on that. How about that? All right. Um, there is a f- app in here somewhere where I've stored all this information secretly from myself. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Very helpful. It's, uh, I'm 90s. Can we say one? I'm pretty sure this was the first one. I'm almost positive I sat the second one over next to you because I was like, but I don't know that for 100% fact now. That's a problem. They're kind of similar. No, this was the first one. This is more That's grainy. The honey one. Yeah, this is a little I mean, more honey grainy. It? It's number 32. How much do you think that costs? Not much. Yeah, I hope not. 35 bucks. <laughs> I hope it doesn't cost much because that, that was not my favorite. Not, not, no, that I'm wasn't gonna, bad. It I'm wasn't bad. Say, I'll say 50 bucks. Okay, it wasn't my favorite. Just knowing you. 25 $25? I'm going to go ahead and say that was Wild Turkey 101. We both did. There was a Wild Turkey. You're saying right. like an adult Wild Turkey honey, I think you said. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead on a very strong limb and say that's Wild Turkey 101. Let's go ahead and take a look. See. And that's Wild Turkey Wild Turkey 101. And it's 25 bucks. 25 bucks. So all it was right. all right. I came off that, those somersaults and backflips of all the things I ate and tasted today, and that's why I think we well, came Well, I'm proud of myself because like I'm not a bourbon guy, and I think I said Wild Turkey first, right? You did. Number 31. 31. The second one. I liked a lot better in this particular instance. So yeah. Wild yeah. Turkey loses. It's probably, more, it's probably much more, more refined. Oh, it's only $10 more. 35 bucks. Yeah. That's the funny thing about bourbon. There's some really good, inexpensive bourbons. Yeah. Knob Creek 9. 100 proof. Yeah. Knob okay. Creek makes a solid. Yeah. yeah. Knob Creek is not bad. Jim, good old Jim Beam. No, they're doing two. Two old families. Been doing it for a long time. Yeah. I, I do like the Knob Creek stuff, especially like. At a bar, or if I'm getting, if I, that's a good mixer whiskey, you know. Yeah. For drinks. Well, if you're listening to, if you have listened to this end of the episode, uh, I would appreciate if you reached out to either Garrett or myself personally on either Instagram or a, a letter in the mail encouraging mm-hmm. us to do another one. Um, that would be cool. That would be cool. And it, all it takes is one person, apparently, and we'll, we'll make it happen. And if you have, I would say this. Hang in there. You ain't alone. Yeah, you know I mean? definitely not. We, we're, we're there to support back as many people as, as we can handle and need it. Yeah. And if we can't do it directly, we probably know somebody who can. Yeah. All right. Should we, should we show what's going on that we're, all the people we're neglecting while we podcast? Tonight? Yeah, yeah, we should. Everyone, everybody come in here. Let's do a big group shot. And hey. Just pile in if you're, you know, let's zoom Good it out. Good luck. Pile in around us. And we'll just hey, how wide nice is this big shot? shot? I can make it wider. I can make it wider. I can make it much wider. There we go. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's a family picture. It is. Searchable as reptiles. Keep coming. Keep coming. You got to get in. You got to get in more. You got to get in. Johnny, you're small. Get in front. Do I sit? Do I sit Squeeze. I think we're... Are we fitting? Can you see? Can you see from the blue shirt to the black sweater? Yeah, we got We got your face in there. We got... There it is. I think we got... Can I see the your cat? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I can, definitely. All right, all just right. so that everyone gets to know you, on the count of three, we're all going to say our name. One, two, three. No, 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 three. no, 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 no. Oh. Uh, on the count of three, I know you're all Canadian and stuff, but on the count of three, we're going to say aloha, right? <laughs> <laughs> One, and it's going to like, it's like this, aloha. This is not your channel. One, two, it's my doing? camera. What are we doing? <laughs> I'm saying aloha. One, two, three. Aloha. aloha. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Thanks, guys. Searchable is solid. That was solid. What? No, we were double clapping. Yeah. yeah. So look at at the auction. I'm like, I can't clap with my hand, and she goes like, I got you. My hand's.